Porter Barrels back for another week. No AFL news and super coach teams and all that jazz. And all that jazz. <laughs> but no jazz. There will be no jazz. Oh. <laughs> Not very good at jazz. So that's what's happening. Jazz is hard. And you're a drummer. Is that, is that Jazz correct? is very hard. Yeah, jazz is very difficult. But, but also like, improvised a lot. Is that true? Yeah, and I think the thing about... The thing about jazz, it's it doesn't. The thing about jazz, it doesn't get um, appreciated as much as much as it should, because people listening to it are like, "Yeah, oh, this is okay." Or like, oh, "I hate this." And it's like, if you knew what went into it, yeah, like bloody hell. Anyway, it's one of those ones. Uh, tune in next week to episode two of the jazz podcast. Yes, <laughs> yeah, smooth jazz. Right, I well, <laughs> give me give me an intro, boys. We'll put the thing on because we always forget to do well, it. Well, last week we had it as an outro. Yeah, we did. We'll put it on then. But this while, week, while we get organised with our websites and such. Give me some. Jeez. One of the biggest burps I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> the winner of the North Sydney Medal in 2010 is Scott Embereen. We've never actually said congratulations to Scott Embleberry for winning the 2010 Norm Smith Medal. Ah, oh, good on him. Here's something to kick off the podcast. Yeah. Um, so the Norm Smith Medal. Yeah. Uh, did you guys know? I know I knew this already, but I'm not sure if we've discussed it. And you guys knew. The Norm Smith Medal. It's the grand final best on ground. Well, that. So but uh, <laughs> the winner is told before it's announced in front of everybody. So the person knows already. That sucks. Yeah. Is that why they're always like, uh. It's Basically, like, it's don't. They're told, don't swear, thank all the sponsors. Yeah, Whatever right. you do, don't swear. But they could easily just tell everyone that. But what was funny, so. <laughs> yeah. So, like, hey, if you get it, don't swear. What's it, wh- Yeah, just as a blanket rule. Yeah, and the other interesting thing, too, is generally the. Um, Votes come in earlier than the game finishing. Yeah. So, like, a few minutes before the game is over is when the, the votes... So, someone could have 10 touches and keep the winning goal. In the that's last few frust- minutes, that's frustrating, too. So, that'd be like um, Woj at the draft. Yeah, like when you watch the draft and five minutes before the pick comes in, Woj is like, and Minnesota at pick number two will yeah. be picking... Yeah, yeah, sorry, just to let you know, we're making an NBA reference. There's this dude is an NBA insider. Woj, look him up on Twitter if you need to know anything. But they have the Doge. draft and they have this big studio and this whole setup and people are interviewing people. And um, before the, they've made the announcement, Woj has already tweeted out who it's going to be anyway. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess it's the same if they let him know early. I just don't know That's why like they the person let him know the, early. The bloody magician secrets wanker. It's like, piss off. I'm, give me the illusion. This is yeah, all happening. The bloody yeah. I, out of interest, Zach, how would you pronounce Woj's surname? Uh, Wojnarowski. So he says Wojnarowski. Yeah. Okay. I need to take more. Why is the A before the N? I don't know. It's Pol- they're always, Polish? Yeah, but they're always like, um, yeah, over to Adrian Wojnarowski. Oh, Wojnarowski. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. But he, Where's the so letters? How does he pronounce it? Wojnarowski is what I've seen. Because well, ho- sorry, what I've seen, what I've him, heard. It's funny because they don't call him Woj; they call him Woj. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, this we, is good. We digress. Uh, Wojnarowski. <laughs> Already. So, how are we looking? How are we looking? So we're sitting here. We're watching. Haven't they scored yet? What are they doing? <laughs> Not scoring. Gold Coast Suns zero. Adelaide Crows also zero. Also zero. Uh, zero. No, the game's only just started. Now, get them get unpo- bowling. Unpopular opinion. I'm looking forward to th- watching this game. Yeah, well, it's because and I know it's the an only game. Unpopular opinion because the first five minutes has been shit. No, unpopular opinion because I actually heard someone uh, over this weekend saying, "Oh, good fixture." And there's one game on on a Sunday, and it's Gold Coast and Adelaide. Mm. But like, Gold Coast are in form, and like Adelaide aren't great, but they're not terrible. And I feel like this is a game they'll they'll put a hundred percent in. So you know, the only good thing about buy rounds is, well, especially this week, there's no overlapping games. Yeah, that is good. That's a good thing. Bad that it's... But, yeah, there's only six games and they put one on Thursday night. That's a bit tough. Yeah. Um, just because then you're sitting there on a Sunday and you're like, what do I do yeah. while I wait for the footy to start? Yeah, because um, with a lot of those fixtures, like usually, say, there'd be like North Melbourne and I don't know who else. Uh, North Melbourne and Adelaide, as an example. And there's another game, let's say, 
Richmond Carlton. Like you're not watching that other one. It could yeah. be a cracker, but you're just not going to. So it's good that you. Well, and they always put into state. Like I remember, was it, it was a couple of weeks ago when Port had a cracking game on a Saturday night against some um, like Western Bulldogs or something, but they didn't put it on because it was uh, inter, like an interstate team. And then the other game that they had on was like North Essendon. It's like oh. no one cares about that. It's happened a few times. Unfortunately, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, no. Um, well, well, we get into we we'll go round, well, yeah. get into the rounds, and well, see gonna how say, we're going. Gonna say, Simon. Sometimes when there is a game between two teams that aren't going so well on at the same time as a blockbuster, you may take an interest if you have some super coach players. Yeah, that's true. And um, if there are anyone that I've picked, just buddy, yeah, you'll be really interested because it's a they're sh- injured, or yep. they're or they've just just decided to go home because they've got stuff to do. I don't know what keeps going on here. Go to Bali, or they're Paddy Cripps. And um, yeah, well, no, he's all right. Out there. Seventy-nine. Yeah, but he played well. That. They just they they were giving him cla- like we'll get into it when the game when we talk about the game, which is the first up. Oh, which but is they now. were giving him clangers for nothing. Well, all right, yeah. we'll we'll get into it. Richmond Tigers, eighty-one. Cam <laughs> So I get straight into Crips, seventy-nine, yep. hundred and six. Uh, dream like dream team. So that's just that's raw a big stats. dream team score. I'm yeah. Sure. Well, that was. Third only to Doc, who was best on ground, and Sam Walsh. Yeah. Um, he actually beat every Richmond player in that regard. But 34 touches, four marks, five tackles, 15 of his touches contested. But they gave him 10 clangers, which some weren't there. That's a season high in a game, I, th- I believe. For what? 10 clangers. I think mm-hmm. so, I read that somewhere. Didn't Bont break the record? That was at last year. I think he broke... Sorry, this season... I thought Bonds was last season. I saw so- someone. This this could be completely wrong, but I saw someone wrote, "Creeps has just broken their um, twenty twenty two record for clangers." Jai Simpkin had thirteen this year against St Kilda. Paddy Ryder ah, had twelve okay. against Hawthorne. Chad Warner, Tim Kelly, Tim Taranto, and Clayton Oliver all had twelve. Well, I take back that stat. But ten, <laughs> ten is still a lot. Yeah, yeah, go. ten is a lot. Oh, yeah, Bond was the record last year with fifteen. Yeah. Um, Sime, you've got Doc. So I've got Doc. He was big. 128, 128 smashed it. But, and as we spoke about on Friday, mm-hmm. Doc didn't do much in the first quarter and was stuck on the bench for, I believe it was... He had 13% time on ground yeah, in the first quarter. Yeah, it was 11 Jeez. straight minutes at one comeback. point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's huge. He marked everything in the wet. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. No, I also had Hewitt, 103, which you guys have, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, Cripps, who we spoke about... Um, on the Richmond side, short. Yeah. Came up short in that game. 84, but another one similar to uh, Cripps, 25 touches, 24 of them kicks. Um, and then he had eight clangers. That's the worst I've seen him use the ball by foot. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. I think he, the Carlton pressure kind of had him going a bit. And the weather, it was torrential. Yeah, it was at, horrid. At mm. points, but... Um, Judson Clark, anyone got? Yeah, we got Judson. Judson. He scored forty-five. That was disappointing because he was on forty-six at three-quarter time, and he actually played a really good first three quarters. And then I don't think he got on the ground he in the last quarter. He played the entire fourth quarter on the bench. Which when does that happen? Someone actually, I did see someone wrote that um, if you look at the size of his legs, you'd know why because there's no way he's running when there's any water on the ground because he <laughs> his legs aren't strong enough to keep him up. When they say yeah. they're running on top of the ground, he's running fucking yeah. four feet under it. Yeah. Uh, so that was disappointing, but you know what? He had a sixty first up, so yeah, he'll be on the bubble. So we hope he keeps it's his fine. spot. Yeah, um, he should keep his spot too, because he, even for his forty five, he was uh, ten touches and four marks. Yeah, in a, an intercept mark near the boundary at one yeah. point, which was pretty pretty um, handy. Um, the you other one else? we had Sam Walsh. Walshy yeah, scored one hundred and nine, oh. which is disappointing because he's on seventy four halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, but he only went at fifty five percent. Yeah. Jesus. That's, he's not very and good. And he didn't do much in the last quarter, but he did get done holding the ball. Um, also, fuck Shea Bolton. Yeah, we don't like him. Oh, like what when happened? He, he taunted Doc, and it's like, you fuck. Of all people. Oh, and right. even I Richmond players were like, yeah, that was a bad look. But Doc, uh, yeah. Doc was laughing, but not a good look. Mm. Yeah, that's sort of gone away from the game a little bit. I was, I, I was praying Carlton won after that. Yeah. The umpires weren't having it, though. There were a couple, nah, of, couple of... You're the umpire guy. Yeah, because the umpires, like, they got to work it out. Yeah. Like, it's just been really disappointing. And I was actually talking about this game, and it wasn't so much what they were calling, whether it was right or wrong. It was shit that they just weren't calling. Yeah. And it's like, that's clearly there. 
because it's it's ever since they've made a big point in Ginovan and Waitman doing all this ducking, and they're like, um, now they just won't pay it. But it should be consistent. It's like to some players they are and some they aren't. Well, yeah. they're just not paying it. Like well, there's high tackles, like especially Ginovan was getting his head ripped off last week on Queen's birthday. Yeah, and they were just like, nah, nah you yeah. duck. Nah, and it's like, but he's not ducking now. I suppose it's always. Um, the consistency, as as Grazi said, the consistency thing. You, you either call it or you don't. If you don't call it all season, then everyone knows. But if you, you can't just pick and choose. But that's the thing is like it's almost like in the umpire's room, like you hear it each week, the commentator's like, yeah, so there was a real focus on holding the ball this week and then it's just constantly calling that. Yeah, it's like just pay it the same every week. Well, like the rules are there, like... Whether they need to work out, like, they just need to make the rule black and white. Like, it's not, like, an opinion-based thing. It's like, I don't care how you fucking got them high. If you get them high, fuck off. It's high. I think or whatever it is. I think we all agree that there's, just there's too many rules. I think people say that about all things in society. But in this case, we mean it a little bit because... Well, I think there's merit to it because of how much the umpires are expected to know. And in some games, they do have rules they sort of seem to not pay attention to because there's so much to sort of try and interpret at the time. But uh, well, the like, annoying part is apparently during the week they've come out and rather than say, yeah, we're looking at we can tone down some rules, they've said, oh, we're actually looking now at making it last touch over the boundary line. And it's like, just stop. Like enough, I know it's like the whole, oh, the like whole, you can't change the game, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm a traditionalist and that's fine. But like, the issue isn't like last touch. Bring it, if you're going to bring in last touch out of bounds, get rid of five other rules. Yeah, but that's Don't the thing. Like other shit. In, in, ter- in the endeavour of making the game quicker, great rule, but we can't just keep adding rules. No, that's what I mean. Get like, rid of some. Because, yeah, I'd love to see that rule come into place because imagine how quick the game no, would I, be and ha- the importance of keeping the ball in play. It's, I, well, ha- I hate it. There's like It's the same as every sport in the world. Whoever yeah. touches it last, well, it's like, no, nah, well, it's not yours. That, that's why I love that it's unique. And I know that they keep saying it works in the SA NFL, but you don't want a situation where it's 51 metres out from a team's goal to close game and someone gets hip and shouldered over the boundary line and they get penalised for it. Like, I, yeah. you know... Uh, but but I, it, it forces corridor football as well, so it's a lot better. No, it does, but I just don't want them to pay, like, incidental ones. If it's, a, if it's just a handball or just a kick... And basically pay them as out on the full. Well, isn't that what they do in AFLW? Is if if it's like a contested footy and it goes out, it's a throw in. But if you, in like if you're just there and you kick it and it goes out, and then it's like, all right, that's out. Every everything ball now. Every disposal is out on the full if it's not touched, essentially. But rather than like if it's not a a kick or a handball, yeah. Yeah. But I suppose the issue with that is that's already complicated. Well, then yeah, Yeah. yeah. because I think the other thing about heaps of rules. Also, some of them are very grey. Yeah, so yeah. that's why there's uh, misinterpretations. But I wonder whether that um, last touch out of bounds rule will be just like... Remember when they got rid of rush behinds? Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, no. What are they going to do? And, like, it really, it's probably made the game a touch better and it's it hasn't really well, affected too much. Like, I thought that was going to be huge. They figured out how you can still rush a behind. So if, well, you're, with, if so you're within 10 metres and under direct pressure, you can go for go Bring for the back the Wizard Cup and we just fucking test all the rules at the start. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the worst idea. And it doesn't have to be... If the players are worried about playing too early in the season or whatever... Just, it doesn't have to be... I'd still watch it if but it was... But didn't they do that like in the VFL or whatever? They tested all these rules and... Like, oh, they, they did they do it, get, okay. They copped all this shit of like terrible rules. But like, wasn't it like the play on you don't have to bounce it shit? And then they did the Oh, long, kicks backwards the, don't count as a mark? Yeah, the bigger goal square and like stuff doesn't work and stuff works. But the, the problem is, is when they bring in rules... And it's like, round one, here's a new rule. And it's like, oh, okay, shit. They yeah. brought in a medical sub a week before the season started last yeah, year. Yeah, that's got to go. I hate the sub no. rule. I well, I hate the sub now because I think I had three three players in my team subbed out with injury this year. But round. it's not even like the people getting subbed out for whatever reason. It's the, they're taking the piss. They're like, yeah. oh, we're managing the injury. Slight corky. But if you look at the rule, it's actually written that a player may only be subbed out if the understanding is that they will be unavailable to play for the next 12 days. Yeah. yeah. Like a concussion, which is yeah, the reason it, it was brought in. And they're like, um, oh, yeah, so he's uh, felt some, what was it, hamstring awareness. He's like, 
Yeah, he most people hamstring. should be aware of their hamstrings. Yeah, they have them. Like, if you don't, then you don't have them. Yeah. Put your hand just behind your leg there between uh, <laughs> your knee and your ass. Also, with Oh, some... no, I'm going to have to leave the pod because you've just made me aware <laughs> of my hamstrings. With, um, with some of the rules that they have, like, are they... Are they focusing on, like, gameplay or what? Because one that they should bring in, I don't know if it's one, I reckon they would have had it in the bloody NAB Cup or whatever it was, or the Wizard, Wizard Cup. Cup. <laughs> whatever it was. What's Anzac, NAB Cup? Is Anzac NAB Cup, Cup anything? No. Nah. Yeah. NAB Cup. Is it was that, a NAB Cup. But it isn't the NAB Cup. Cup now the NAB League? NAB, NAB which League. Which is, like, under eight. Under Well, whatever it is. But, yeah, yeah. But um, I reckon if you kick one from outside... Like 50 yeah, to 60. Po- super goal. Yeah, yeah. No. I think super goal is yeah. a thing for sure. See, that's cool. It makes it a bit more fun. Um, <laughs> only but, when that player is wearing a pink bib and they have to kick it on their opposite foot and it can only be in the last five minutes of a game yeah. when the margin is less than 10 points. Yeah. You've just described every rule in the AFL. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. To Simo. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, anyway we'll, we'll move on. So yeah. who, are, who, are the, who are the top scorers in that game, Hutto, who are, for each team? Oh, I already clicked out of it. Oh, well, but okay. I can go can back. Doesn't matter. Um, so top three for Carlton were Doc, Saad and Walsh. Saad doing it with one eye, mind you. Yeah. yeah one hand at one that point. Was Took a bloody one hand mark. Yeah, it was good mark too. Uh, on the Richmond side, Vlostone, Broad, Nankervis. Now, Vlostone is now the number one average interceptor in the comp, That's which huge. is pretty interesting. Intercept marker or just intercept player? Intercept mark. Is he? Yeah. I thought Sicily was number one. Nah. Or is that, did he overtake this him the other night? average. Oh, average per game. Yeah. 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 He, he does get in the right spot a Sicily's lot. Sicily's number one for marks. Um, Vlostone was on radio last week, I heard, and he actually... Uh, that he was talking about being really good at intercepting, and he said, "Wow, well, I never, I don't play on a player ever." Yeah, so he's being a bit sort of really uh, self-deprecating. That's quite a large yeah. head. Mm. Um, I don't know. I what if that, that helps? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, just while we're on the number one in the comp, I just wanted to ask you guys because Zach considers himself the AFL guru. Who leads the comp in average tackles per game? Is it someone who hasn't played the full season? Meaning that. You know, they played four games and they had heaps of tackles in those four games. No, they're they're pretty regular. They're not a, they're not. Well, actually, without me looking, I don't think they've played every single game, but they've played the majority from one of these teams. The eighteen in the AFL, yeah. Ah, no, I wouldn't know. They are actually are one of these teams. Oh, on the TV or yeah, on the TV. Took. Oh, no, from Gold Coast. No. Oh. Uh, ben Keys, Sam Berry. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Good on him. Yeah. Not related to the other Berries, Jared despite looking Nor the same. Tom. Oh, there yeah. you go. Who oh, are related stuff. and play on the same team. Um, also, third highest Richmond scorer. Who I mentioned. Toby Nankervis. Yes. Potentially in my team this week. Oh, yeah, you've got Bruce still. That hurts. Um, so, Bruce... I'm not holding him through another injury. Bruce, kick him right in the caboose. Yeah, so. um, but... Nankovis, if you look at his, you in the his recent scoring, Bruce. I believe he averages, um, I think he had five or six tons in a row and then an 88 and then 100 and whatever it was on the weekend. Uh, so at the moment, Ruckman are hard to come by. He's a pod. He's and fucking younger than me. Jesus. Yeah, but he look, does he look real old? Yeah, he does yeah. look real old. Uh, so he didn't start the season the best, but then he went on a little bit of a streak there from round, uh, round five. Yeah. Um, and he didn't quite reach his break even, which I think was 112, but he still scored a ton. So what's he won't he, go up um, price. What's his uh, schedule look like coming up? That'd be the big thing for me. They play Geelong, which, as we've mentioned, Reece Stanley negates Ruckman, Ruckman yeah. somehow. West Coast, who don't have a Ruckman, yeah. and Gold Coast, who have the best Ruckman in the comp right now. Does it, it doesn't so mean that's that pretty interesting. Ruckman can't no, score. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm not saying that, but... It's an interesting run of games for him. I think the last few he's come up against some pretty easy ruck battles. When you look at it, you got what Tom De Koning at Carlton, uh, who's um, Port had Finlayson. Finlayson at Port. That's it. Sydney don't. Who's their ruck? I think man? Hickey did Laddams. play that night. Laddams and Hickey may have. And then Essen and and then Hawthorne don't have a ruckman either. I think that's when Cosy was rucking. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think his scores reflect his easy opponents. Uh, Collingwood there without Grundy. West Coast again, so now he's got a run where he's coming up against some interesting ones. I'm not saying don't trade him in. I'm just saying it's an interesting thought. Well, I could bring in English, move English to my ruck and then have to play a rookie forward or just bring in Nankovic. Well, I've got, I've got English in my ruck now. I do too. 
Yeah, oh, English yeah. and wits. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, anyway. Right, we'll move on to the next one. Essendon Bombers. Yeah, the 107. boys. 107. Thank you, Shane. 72. We should have won this by more. Now, I've got... You can I, hear these now. This yeah, one. we can. I, I've got a question for you. Okay. Why was this win so significant? Is it because you haven't won Because we don't win football games. Yeah, so it's no, just... But like, it, this was... Like, it's a rivalry it's a or something? This was... Well, St Kilda were before... Coming into this game, were they top four? Or right there? Right there, at least, yeah, if they were. At, yeah, at minimum. And aside from about five minutes in the third quarter, I don't... This was one of those games where, like, typically I always complain when Essendon win. It's like, why can't I just sit here and enjoy it? Like, why can't we just win? <laughs> why is it always, like, by six points? Yeah. But aside from that five minutes, I was just like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. I feel comfortable. It was a weird five minutes. It was a strange game, the way it went. Um, and also, Essendon not kicking goals in the last quarter was a yeah, strange since, stat. Since um, round 10. Round 10, yeah. Which was, uh, and it was, I think. And then it took us till the last three minutes for two metre Peter to kick two. Yeah, and two good grabs. Two Friday night games in a row, I thought we were going to have goalless last quarters because last week there was no goal in the last quarter. Well, yeah, we didn't kick a goal in the last quarter last week and we won the last quarter yeah. against Carl. And then this week, I think there was eight minutes left when I think it was Jay Gresham maybe kicked a goal. Yep. Yeah, I was like, God, I thought it was going to happen again. Um, well, he kicked two in the last, I think. He was very good. 20, what was it? 28 touches and three goals. Yes, four Not tackles. If you still got him, that's fantastic yeah, work. he we, top scored for them. We have Jack Sinclair, who started very slowly and yeah. then came very good, very 31 quickly. touches. No tackles, though, disappointingly. Yeah. Um, who else on the St Kilda side? Uh Seb Ross, actually, if you look at his scoring, has been quite good this year. Seb you probably Ross, wouldn't have him in, but... Do you remember when he used to be, like, a slow midfielder? And now when he gets going in space, he looks quick. Well, that's the thing. Like, I was... At the end of last year, uh, the rumour was that Seb Ross did a, f- a tour of Essendon's facility. And, yep. like, we were really keen on bringing him in. I was like, another one? Why? And then having watched him this year, I'm like, oh, yeah, actually... Does he just look quick because he's in that St Kilda midfield with no quick players? Well, I don't know. There's something about it. But, like, if you look at his scores, he's had one score of 63. Aside from his first round, three games this year, he hasn't scored below 96. I saw someone on Big that's Footy huge. that said, oh, my super pod said Bross. I'm like, damn, that's brave and well done. Yeah, like, if you're committed to it, nicely done. Um, but on the Essendon side, a super pod that looks like he has now broken out as a super coach talent, but also an AFL talent, is uh, Mason Redman. I don't mind Redman. The, the Red only, Dog. The only issue is he's still something that can pump out a 40 or a 50 every now and then. Yeah, so he started the year, Paul. He, well, he scored a couple of under 70. He scored a 47. But since, what, since round six, he's only had two scores under, three scores under 100. Two but of two them 90s. 90s. Yeah. Um, well, and then taking Ridley's points. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, Friday night, he had 31 touches, 11 marks, three tackles, and a behind. And at 93%. 93%, which is phenomenal. Um, Jai Caldwell had his career high in disposals with 23, seven tackles. I posed this question to Donders, who is also an Essendon fan, and I was like, is the reason that we've been losing, and I'm not saying it's because he's a bad player, but is it Parrish? Because Friday night... Jai Caldwell went into the middle and Archie Perkins went into the middle a lot more who is, as we know, well, he's probably not one of yet, but he could be close to one of the most dynamic players in the comp soon. Not whether or not he's the best player, but he's who is, pretty who is dynamic. That, Archie, Archie Perkins. Archie Perkins. Very he's, got dynamic. The, he's got the tools. Yeah. But Jai Caldwell goes in there, 23 touches, 7 tackles, and he was... Very integral to it. And then you also notice Darcy Parrish went out, well, was um, incapacitated essentially from the first quarter last week, but he stayed out there. But Dylan Shield did a lot of the heavy lifting in midfield. And he's played two two of the best games of his career. Yeah. Almost. Worryingly for Darcy Parrish, owners and super coach, maybe he'll play more forward like he used to. Yeah. Um, But maybe good for Essendon if it changes up the midfield dynamic. Although last year, remember, he was very good and you guys yeah. made finals. I mean, so. well, it's, it's uh, hard because he's the yeah. second leading average disposal getter in the yeah. club behind Clayton yeah. Oliver. I was going to I was gonna say, and I would have said it with uh, a little bit of doubt, I'd seem to remember last year he was the reason why you're winning. So yeah, yeah. It's but the, hard. But, I think that but it, people grow and change. So it, the tackling seems to have fallen off, mm. but uh, as a whole team it had for the last month. Yeah. Um, 
the the other one that I noticed this game that played quite well, uh, Jake was back, big stringer. He that one. Did you did you watch any of the game? I did not. Did, uh, his goal from fifty where. It, it left the boot and he turned and ran to the bench and it wasn't even within 30 metres of the goal yet. Have you, have you seen it was Zach? His time to come off, his rotation. Oh, So, he just so went he's pumped it from probably 54. And just ran off. When you, when you know off the boot. When you know off the boot, He just going knew in. it was going in, so yeah. he's turned and the whole way he's got his arm up. And the ball's just, it's not even there. Still it's like the Steph Curry shooting threes yeah, and as soon as good. it leaves, he's already turned around. That's pretty good. It was so good. And BT was frothing it, as he does. Um... And then the other one uh, that was a nice little watch for anyone that can needs another rookie was Massimo D'Ambrosio. Oh, you can. It's pronounced exactly how it is written. Oh, very good. <laughs> I wish someone would tell the fucking AFL commentators that because they kept going D'Ambrosio. D'Am D'Ambrosio. But like, D'Ambrosio. Why don't? So how long does it take, right? So the guys, what time do the do the footy players get there if they're going to play? A game. Well, if this what what time this kick off? Bloody seven fifty. I reckon right they'd on. probably there for three hours before. Four. Okay, cool. How long does it take to go down? Just someone from the media go down. Hey, hey, mate. Um, how do we pronounce your name? And yeah. he just tells them. No, is that why they don't do well, that how anymore? Hard is it to why call, not? Call the team list. T- call an Essendon person and be like, "Now this new kid." Yeah. What do you got? How to pronounce his name? It's and then Dyson Heppel yeah. answers and goes, "Yeah, Fantasia." Do, That's why. Can I can I guess? Why do they troll people? Do they? Yes. Dyson Heppel did. Dyson right. Heppel told uh, Hamish okay. McLaughlin yeah. or Basil Zemplis, one of them, that yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, this whole time everyone's been pronouncing Arazio's surname wrong. It's actually Fantasia. And they went, "Oh, okay." And then for the whole game, called him Fantasia. And everyone at home's like, everyone knew that was a joke. Right. <laughs> Everyone knew that yeah, was a joke. Well, his family wouldn't have known it's a joke. Um, the other one that was uh, awesome to watch but disappointing uh, from Essendon perspective, Andy McGrath went back to halfback, which is what we drafted him as, and he was probably, as a player, aside from Redders, the best player on the ground. Mm. Um, and apparently he's hurt himself again. So oh, I didn't know that. Out. Um, um, Ridley hurt me, but he didn't play yeah. as a negating role on uh, yeah. Max King. And I, I had Merritt. Yeah. He, he, he won't do so kick well. out still. He did a couple and he didn't leave the square twice. Merritt, Simon, that's another good pick from you. He's a picture of consistency. He's probably not going to give you too many 170s, but he'll get you at least yeah, 90 like every 91. week. 91. Yeah. Um, that's actually like his flaw, really. Like he's, that's his flaw score. Like these lowest. Oh, floor, yeah. Yeah, sorry, F- double O-R. O-R. Like if you're like not A-W. He, his ceiling's about 140, and yeah. his um, floor is around about sort of 85, 90. Floor yeah. scores in seven years yeah. ago. And floor like, scores at the door. All right. What have we got now? Um, well, and just a little observation. It's sort of been in the first couple of games. It's been in, been a few upsets, hasn't there? So, mm. um, Port Adelaide, 82. Sydney Swans, 59. You might argue this was an upset also. Yes, Bit definitely. Bit to go through yeah. here, but our man butters. What an interesting tale, because when I finished my game yesterday, one of the boys from the twos came up and said, Butters got injured in the second quarter, and he got subbed out, and I was fuming. He's like, but don't stress too much, because he still managed to score 68. Yeah, well. Well, so he was on 64 when he got subbed out. Uh, Throughout the game, his score fluctuated all the way down to 56. Did it? And then the game ended, and he was back up to 68. Because he impacted so much early on. Yeah, so when they killed him. Um, but, yeah, he played 25% of the game and he had nine touches, two marks, two tackles and a goal. Yeah. So, as I said to you guys, if you're going to have a premium get injured, look on the bright side of life. They've done the heavy lifting and gotten you something respectable before they've gone down. So, the interesting thing, I'd love to get both of your opinion on this, is what you do with Butters moving forward. Now, what's your trade situation looking like, Syme? How many you got left? Um, well, I've got... 28k, and I've probably, I don't know, three? You've got 10 trades. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought you meant how many? <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't realise, I didn't understand the question. Um, sorry, can, trade you, situation? can you use that in a oh, sentence? Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 I thought you were talking about how many more trades. Do you mean stocks? Am I, I, am I going stonks. to make? Stonks. No, so, not how many more trades are you going to make? How many trades do you have remaining? So I have 10. Okay. And 28k, you say? Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of options for you. Zach, where are you at? I have eight, but I have a boost still. Yeah, but that doesn't really matter. That's yeah, it does this week because I can get rid of Proust and Butters for um, two premiums. Okay. Um, so what's your plan, Simon, with Butters 
considering we, we don't know the full extent, but it's looking like a two to four. I'm just glad he's given me an excuse. Okay, so you, you, you Trading, got him out? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I reckon. Zach? Uh, definitely gone. Sell. Because, okay. you know what? I am ranked 12,887th, but I need to do something every week to maximise my chances of moving up in the rankings as much as I can. And I'm not going to do that by sitting premiums on my bench for a week or two to hold them. Okay. So my coverage for Butters moving forward will be Paddy McCartan because I didn't sell him. So I'm in an interesting situation where do I back Paddy McCartan? Um, I'd like to preface this by saying I have a completed team, but only four trades. So I've got four trades now. So I'm thinking, do I trade out Zach Butters and go – so my – the most expensive and probably the highest average I could get is Isaac Heaney. Do I trust Heaney enough? No. Do I trust him enough to burn a trade and score more than McCartan? I trust him enough to score more than McCartan, but is it worth the trade? Or do I hold Butters for three weeks? In saying that, Heaney averages more than Butters – for the rest of the year, in my opinion, and that's why I'm leaning towards doing it. Could you trade Butters to a cheaper player that plays every week as coverage? Then in a couple of weeks, if McCartan's scoring poorly for two or three weeks, then upgrade with all the money you've got McCartan to the most expensive player you can in any line. Possibly. You'd um, use two, but it wouldn't be straight away. You'd basically yeah, be saying, see, righto, Paddy, give me do, give me I a couple of good weeks. I we'll want see. all I need all my trades to cover the inevitable injuries that I will <laughs> well, yeah. be yeah. receiving. Um Well the thing of I'd be worried about with Heaney is I would argue that he's a bit injury prone. He's played every game. No, nah, so he's season. injury prone, but he doesn't necessarily miss games when he's got niggles, but he plays like a busted ass. Like he yeah. plays through it. It's like you're brave, Isaac, but you don't maybe get a kick. Yeah. Uh, but this year is actually his highest averaging year, we've yep. got to actually say. And, um, well, he played 20 games the year before. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, he's averaging 102, which has definitely helped out by his he's only start had, to the year. He's literally had Two one, s- one score under 75. Yeah. That's. For a Ford, and you're averaging 103, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to quickly look. This, this is bad podcasting, but I am interested in seeing what the other averages are for forwards around the grounds. Because um, disappointingly, Luke Parker looked like someone that I might be able to do butters straight to, but then he decided to score well. Um, oh, so his price will go up, is that what you're suggesting? Well, I don't know if his price will go up, but it definitely won't go down as much as I thought it would when he was on 13 at quarter time. Yeah. Uh, and went on to score 135. Uh, his price will go up, unfortunately. Um, so he, he's out of out of contention for me. Uh, do you both have Parker? Yes. Scoring 135? Oh, yep. That's very good. Um, who else is around that price range? you got Heaney, Tex, not keen on that. Um, Tim Taranto can't even get a gig. No. He played twos today. Pat Lipinski is an interesting one, but... Uh, Gresham. Gresham is... Dylan Moore? Nah, I'm not sold on Dylan nah, Moore. Nah, start of the season was better than what he's doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, the one that... Uh, I'm just... I've got to have a look and see who benefits from Butters being out for Port. But an interesting one could be uh, Connor Rosie. What did he score yesterday? Uh, he ended on... Where is he here? 103. Yeah, he's scoring tons for fun now. And he scored... Uh, I th- he played a lot of midfield once Butters went off. And it's... He's, he's very good. It's it's funny. There's a lot of difference because I reckon if we rewound the tape again to last season, we'd be like, oh, Grazzi was fairly on him and Hutto was fairly off him and I don't know anything, so I don't have an opinion. But last season he wasn't as good. Well, he's, I, I think the problem last season was he scored 140 and 130 to start the season and then he didn't clo- go close to 100 again. Yeah, well. Yeah. Um, the other one, uh, though, is Willem Drew, but I don't think he has forward status, and he scored poorly. What about Wines? How's he going? Yeah, no, he's going well. He has got 122, mate. Oh, he's, um, that's nice. Would have been good to bring in, but, uh, yeah, it's hard to bring in single position players at the moment yep. if you're covering for injuries. Yeah, Because it's like, well, he, can't, he doesn't have that versatility. Now, Bryn Tickle, we've got to talk to Treacle. Oh, yeah, Bryn Tickle. Yeah, before we move on. Treacle. Um, Treacle? He's Brin- playing like Treacle. Bryn Treacle. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately... Poor bloke. Um, yeah, I don't know. What injury, What did he actually do? He snapped his collarbone. Uh, his first game. What he about went, all the he, first games He absolutely recently? fucking... 
like so McInerney took a handball and Tickle came out of nowhere and just massive shoulder to shoulder absolutely rolled him and I, and Tickle got up and he seemed all right and McInerney's like walking around shaking his arm like he he belted him and then all of a sudden they're like oh yeah Tickle snapped his collarbone in that Ugh. here's a quick list for you Max Lynch Bryn Tickle yes Paddy Parnell yep Daniel Turner yes Ryan Angwin yeah Reese Angwin the GWS Ryan. kid Ryan Sam Durden Mm. Off the top of my head are all players playing either their first AFL game or the first game for their new clubs that have been subbed out. Yeah. That's really crazy. Mm. Why is it, Are they guys just nervous? Well, uh, in the case of a lot of them, probably not Durden and Max Lynch. Um, Lynch was concussion. Yeah. Durden was knee. But uh, for the other blokes like Parnell, Turner and Tickle, first game for AFL. And in the case of Turner and... Um, Parnell, they're not exactly the thickest fellas. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dan Turner's sizable, but like he's undersized for a key back. Which yeah, is where he's he was with concussion as well. To be fair, yeah. um, but Parnell's playing again, so he only miss. Yeah. He, they only missed the bye. Um, the other one, Syme. Who else would you have had? No one, probably in Port Adelaide. We talked about Heaney scored 124. A lot of people had Mills 138. Um, um, we've got what you. What were we doing? The like RIP players that um, aren't super coach relevant anymore. Didn't we have a name for that? You know those players that were guns, and now they're not anymore. We, no, no, I think that was one you were working through yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, were you workshopping that one? We talked about it in the first couple of pods. Maybe. Yeah, uh, Jake Lloyd. Yeah, done. Fall from grace. What, what do you yesterday? think about that one? Sign forty two. Forty yeah, two no, for Lloyd. Oh. Look, I agree wholeheartedly. Lloyd. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. I do keep up with that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, clearly. No. <laughs> were, we, were we going to the next game? Yeah, I think we. I think this one's donezo. The next one will be quick because I had zero players Be- Beating a dead horse in this game as uh, Port Adelaide did to John Longmire's possible coaching career. No. I've, I've been reading. Oh, goodness. All right. So, Geelong Cats, 81. Which goes Eagles, 63. Worry about... I reckon 20 kicks away from this being a fourth um, upset in a row. Geelong got very lucky here. Yeah, I, I saw a bit of this at the pub. Um, and that was the best West Coast have bloody played, I reckon. Yeah, well, yeah. consider who they had back in. So they had um, Gaff, Yo and Sheed all return. Uh, not, not Gaff, sorry. Shuey, Yo and Sheed all return. Uh, Shuey actually got tagged. West Coast are the worst team in the comp and Geelong are a top four team and they tagged a player. Oh, oh, well. Tim Kelly uh, are laid out, uh, which brought, which everyone was thinking, ooh, Greg Clark in. No, you'd be wrong. Jackson Nelson in, Greg Clark sub. Uh, lucky for Greg Clark owners, he was a very, quite an early sub in as Jeremy, Jeremy McGovern looked like he may have had too many jalapenos the night before and had quite bad abdominal pain. Oh, what no, no, no. He copped a big knock in the ribs, but he, oh. he was kind of oh. keeled over. Like, say, you know, when you have you too, tell? too many jalapenos and you're like, it's coming right now. Yeah. And he kind of signaled and you're he's in, like, poop, you're it's in happening. La- you're in labour. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Get these spices out of me. Um, um, Rep Bazo, first game for Simo's mate. The, yeah. How do I get him in? Uh, I need you, to get defence. So you've got forward. 10 trades. So you trade someone out and you trade Rhett Bazo in. Very good. 40. Yeah, debut, but he's a key back, so 40 is what he's going to get. Oh, what a name. How Rhett, Rhett yeah, Bazo. Um, by the way, Greg Clark, so I traded him for Judson Clark. Oh, very nice. I traded Judson Greg. Clark scored one point more. Thank God that trade worked out. I traded Greg Clark to Tom Stewart, which in the grand scheme of things worked out, but Tom Stewart was not on a big score. Uh, he ended up on 95. Well, I'm sure you'll be fine in the following week. Oh, so. I'm not worried about Tom yeah. Stewart. Um, the other Geelong one, broke the record if for most players in the 90s. If anyone has Brady Hoff, he scored 69, which no. isn't bad from him. Um, do you still have him? Or you end uh, up no, I traded him too. You traded him. Uh, that's about it on the West Coast side. Nothing to report there again. Um, Tom Barras still very good at football. Uh, on the Geelong side, what do we got Cooper Stevens, I still have. He's got 59. Um, Menegola's back. Menegola is back. Samba Koning, 48. Mm, I traded him already. Yeah, yeah no, I got Cash rid of him. Cow. Um, Maxed out. Mitch Duncan, 90. He's another option from Butters straight to Duncan because Duncan's quite cheap still. 
Um, the you're no, pointing. The 90s. Is that a record for the amount of players in the 90s from the one team? It's a lot of 90s. Uh, Selwood, Smith, Stengel, Stanley, Stewart, Cameron, Hawkins, Menegola, Duncan. And all the S's. All the S's. That was like last night in the West, the Western Bulldogs game. The first um, six goals for um, Western Bulldogs were Waitman, Weston, Williams. Ah, oh, that. that's tough. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Geelong side, uh, Blick Vass, 101. Another 100 for the... For the vast, he keeps getting a hundred or hundred and one every week. How yeah. good, Vol? Well, get him in. Um, that's really it uh, from that side. I mentioned everyone in the nineties, and based on how many people are in the nineties, there was actually no one else that played for Geelong yesterday because that was all of them. Anything interesting in the game that happened? Any con- controversy? Uh, controversy? Nah. Fair enough. We'll no, it was a pretty yeah, boring. No, it was a pr- boring game. Well, um, the next one sounds like it was all right. I actually went to bed at halftime, so I don't know what happened after halftime. All I know is that Tom Green kicked a barrel. Oh, there you go. Well, in the first half. And all I know is, did you go to bed in anger because your favourite player in the AFL kicked five in the first half, and I don't think any came from free kicks. Nah. And just I said didn't he care. Dislocated his elbow. And then I saw him dislocate his elbow. I, well, I saw the photo today. That was pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Toby Green kicked seven. Yep, seven for That's Green. Huge. So the, the small Jeez. fours. Anyway, sorry. Simo wants to say this score really bad. Western Bulldogs, 125. GWS joins 105. Fuck you, dogs. Nah, good on them. They had a win. Is that because my dogs are barking? You can hear the dogs barking. I thought it was dogs. We're talking about dogs. We can hear dogs. I, um, thought, it, I thought it was because I was leaving space in the recording that my, my stomach was making noises. <laughs> No, as we know, when from another podcast we record, when there's mm. when there's space, you make noise. Um, righto. Well, super coach. Uh, oh. Let's start with um, the good. You had captain uh, Jack McRae. I also had captain Jack McRae. And when I went to bed, I was not overly happy with captain Jack McRae. What was he on at half time? Um, I can actually tell you. He was on 60 something, wasn't he? Yeah, but like as a captain, I've been. My last few weeks as captains have been fucking like, Took Miller scoring 170. And, oh, no, um, lucky you. Someone else scoring a lot of points. and I almost took bloody Sam Walsh's 109. I've been so bad with captains. Um, 109 will do. What do we got? Where's half time in this boot? Oh, they haven't fixed that yet. Don't worry, I can't tell you. Normally I have it here and I can go to the different halves. Ah, uh, yes. Don't worry. Anyway. Fuck you, Hudson. Jesus. Um, <laughs> save that. Um,. The other goods uh, you two have, Bont? Well, top three... Actually, the top four players for the Dogs to score is Bont and Pelly, Dunkley, English, and McRae, as we mentioned. Four very, very popular players. Um, yes. But yeah, Simon, you and I have Bont? Yep. I, I don't. I've got all of those players you mentioned. Dunkley yeah. and English? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Very good. Um, uh, another popular trade-in this week would have been Bailey Dale um, because he's been so... So very good, yep. uh, scoring wise. Um, he went okay yesterday. Well, he's actually where? Oh Jesus, that's not the averages I wanted. Um, where is he? He's actually three, six, ninth for average in the comp as a defender. Still, he was available at five forty before this game, and will be the same price pretty much because he got his break bang on his break even. Um, it's the first time he's gone under ninety since round two. Mm. You like that. And 80, if 87 is a bad score, you, yeah. you sort of just So you're it. still happy with that. Um, he was he was quite good. Uh, who else was there, uh, thereabouts? Libba, I noticed a lot of people were tossing up between Libba or Bont because of the price difference. Um, 18 points difference, a lot of money difference. So you're not upset with that? No. On the GWS side, I tell you what you are upset with, Simon. Stephen Cornelio, 113. Oh, God. I made it. Yeah, it was a premature trade. But what you are happy with, Lockie Whitfield, 101. Second yep. Time. And you and I brought in Harry Himmelberg, who scored 95. 95. Well done, Has. Uh, he actually switched forward in Q4, which hopefully does not signal I, that he will be a forward moving forward. I hope all you guys in the top 10,000... Or brought him in, and he goes back to the forward line and averages 40. It's you my know, only chance, because well, I didn't bring him in. The only thing with Himmelberg is if that does occur, and I hold on to Butters, for example, I know Cameron's probably going to lose value moving forward with Grundy coming back, is I can do a Himmelberg and a Darcy Cameron straight to two. Because Himmelberg went up, like, he'll go up, like, 100K this yeah. week or some shit, something stupid. 
Something foolish. Something foolish. It was, his break even was minus 67. Jeez, how good's that? Yeah. Um, Jacob Ware. Another good rookie 65. score. 65. Very good rookie score. Yeah. And he was all over. He played really well. He had 14 touches, four marks, four tackles. Who else scored 65 points? Joshua Kelly. I don't know, what was he doing? I didn't get to watch this game. Well, but. I'm telling you, he grabbed at his hamstring last week that no one saw. Hamstring uh, awareness. He had a bit of awareness, and he was worried. Uh, so that's the first fail he's had. Well, he's had, a, I think, a couple of 80s, but that's the first real fail. And in a bye week when I've already had bloody... Well, and it, we'll talk about Proust in a His sec, score's but. actually really weird, because you look at it, 17 touches a mark, 7 tackles, no freeze against, 3 clangers went at 70% and played 89% time on ground. Yes, I don't know. But that's see, that wing? feels unders yeah, for his out? score. I, I guess if if this game wasn't so highly scored super catch wise everywhere else, he probably would have scored 90 for that. Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, but yeah, the, the big talking point from this one, uh, Braden Proust. 17. They reckon it could be a week out, but I'm Do sick you, of holding him. I but the thing is, even played. if it's a week out and Matt Flynn comes in next week and kills it, because he yeah. was a laid out. They won't bring him back in like they didn't last time. Yeah. Um, the other interesting one, I don't know how many people would have done it, but I reckon some would have. James Peatling kicked three goals for three weeks in a row. People he were talking about scored it. seven. Yeah. Uh, left hamstring concern in Q2. He may have had a bit of uh, awareness. That's some awareness. Now, that's, uh, that's some awareness. We... I reckon we should give out more super coach advice now that you're bloody marching towards the top 1,000. You're very close. And Simo's gone up from 125,000 last year to 33,000 now. 33,000? Yeah. 35, yeah. I could I, actually be top 1,000 yeah, this week. Yeah, so um, that's it. So I reckon on the advice, what we do with Pruce, Yep. if you've got Pruce, but you also have English in your forward line already, if you've got decent enough coverage, you can swing between defence and attack, like defence and forward. And midfield, I guess, just maybe hold him. But well, so this is what I did: is that I, with Gorn, because I already did Bruce um, to Tickle last week. Uh, whatever um, is what it is. Tickle will now be a permanent VC loophole option yes. going mm-hmm. forward, Very true. Um, which is a silver lining on that. But what I did with Gorn this week was uh, I traded Gorn. Um, and moved English into my rocks. So it, I am in a situation where I'm tr- relying on quite a few forwards that I didn't want to rely on at the start of the season, namely, um, well, before this week, Butters, Cornelio, Brody, Darcy Cameron. Um, but it is what it is. It is That's super coach for you. How many times? <laughs> Bloody Gorn one week, Butters the next. Who Who's... Well, going to be 40. the next one signed. That's oh. 40. Well, Whoever signed trades in, I think. Hold on, yeah, Jared I Witts is so. holding his knee. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Oh. I, and that's not even funny because he's missed a whole year with that. No, I know. Don't even do it. You foolish man. Well, I just brought him in. So Did you? Right oh, so you broke him. You're the reason why he's scoring so shit today. Yeah, so we're up to the live game here. We've got... What have we got? Have you got the button? The goal cunt. 27. Adelaide Crows, 23. Ah! How's Took going? I've got Took as my captain. Do you? He's on 49. Ugh. Matty oh, Rowell, right. do you have him anymore? No. It's, only half, it's only halfway through the second quarter. Rowell's on like 60. That. Oh, come on. The like. Wits is on 22. Ooh. But the highest scorer. Jordan Dawson, 67. You beauty. Um, yeah, I was going between Dawson and Stewart, and I just trusted Stewart. No, nah, fair. But and plus, very fair. I what I noticed on about my team when I was going through it, I'm like, I'm full premium, and I like every one of these players. That's good. That's that's what you want, surely. Yeah, it, but the, the person I probably least like the most would be Tim English because his head's real long. Just worries me. Yeah, Why does he look like Frankenstein's monster so much? Yeah, he needs to needs to thicken up that neck a little bit. Yeah, his neck's real long. Mm. But the problem is, if he thickens up his neck, I think that's the unnerving thing, is that his neck is the same width as his head. Yeah, It's, it's just yeah, like one know, big... It looks like a like it's just one straight pool noodle. Yeah. Over well, his shoulders. <laughs> he's got a real... He's got a <laughs> dilly of a pickle there. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a wacky inflatable arm floating tube, man, where it's just one, one width the whole way up. Zach? No, you guys are doing well. No, I thought you were going to do Wacky Inflatable. Wacky Inflatable on Flailing Tube Man. Um, you do that very well. Who else is there? Roy Laird's on 49, and I have Ben Keys on 32. Oh. Yeah, look at... Actually, that's... Look at Adelaide. They're 
They've only got five players not in the twenties already, and one of them's Haitley. Oh no, sorry, Haitley's the lowest scorer. Yeah, it's yeah above twenty. Twenty-seven. Well, uh, they're all tracking along pretty well, and they're behind, which is what is interesting. So yeah, well, Dawson's just jumped up to seventy-two without touching the ball. Jeez, magician, big spoil. I saw. Um, yeah. Anyway, but uh, trade plans. Um, no. I think as I said to you guys, I've got a boost left. So this week I could look at bringing in a rookie on the bubble, maybe a Paddy Parnell. How's he going? Um, 42. Yeah. Huge. Whoa. So, yep. On Eight touches, seven marks already. So he's on the bubble. So that's definitely a possibility. Um, don't know who I've got to trade down to him, actually. I just realised, so that's actually concerning. Um, oh, Jordan does. Yeah, and the other the other option then is to trade both Butters and Pruce to potentially Nan Curvis and English. Yes. And then I would have five. Wait, didn't you say you already had English? No, I don't. You said you had the top four scorers. No, a lot of people would. Oh. I, I, no, I said I had Simo them. does. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. that would leave me, my team finished with five trades left for corrections. For the rest of the season, meaning I can't do Ridley to Stewart, which I actually wanted to at the start of the round, but I think I'll just have to hold Ridley now and hope for the best. Hope, hope, mm. hope's what kills you. Yeah, um, I have a few decisions to make because if I want to move up, I'm like I'm not going to win, but I need to get some different dudes. And like, there's a few people I could trade so I could get in bloody Clary next week. No, I would, but um, but a lot of people have Clary, so no, but you're. Hey, that's one of those things. So we're like we're saying, hey, you need pods if you're going to move up. But also, if you don't have the best scorer in the game, it doesn't matter yeah. which pods you bring yeah, in. Yeah, I guess Clary's not the whole team, but he's he's the engine room. Well, he's averaging 127. Yeah. The only person more than that is Lockie Neal, who yeah. everyone has. Like and you, the, yeah, so. and then Sicily Gorn, who doesn't exist. Wait, no, I'm lying. Neil Oliver Laird, Mills English. Laird's one, if you can afford to bring him in. I bring him in because... I was going to bring t- him in a number of weeks ago. Uh, quite, quite a few teams have missed out on Laird because of his... Because um, he didn't play the first round. Yeah. And B That's mid right. only, not everyone was sure that they could trust him. Yep. You can, you can um, trust him. You can yeah, trust him. Mills is up there for super coach scoring. Number one defender. Do you have the number one defender sign? Who would that be? James Sicily. Sicily. Nah, I don't. Um, who's a pod here that's And the other thing, really the other well. thing I wouldn't mind doing is trading out Crips for someone. Why? Oh, I don't know. I'm sick Crips of is currently the 10th highest average in the entire Super Coach nah, game. I'm sick of him. God, you're a weird dude. Who are you going to bring in? Who would you... What's your, like... We told him last week, Brad Crouch. Well, he only scored 80. Which I is know. I'd have to have a look at. It. I need to wait. Who's like out of? If you had to pick three players to bring in every year for your super coach team, and now because they've got to be informed now, who would it be? Like three players, and you're like, I have to have them in super coach. Because well, I know you, you're not just going to go straight to the three highest averages. No, I know. Well, Oliver would be now. <laughs> the hawk. <laughs> I miss having the hawk and a Lee. Yeah. Really. I love it. Okay. Because mine would be two of the three now to be Neil and Oliver. Yeah. And then the third, like, if I had to factor in, like, who I enjoy watching. I'm actually, like, I, I feel really good about having Tom Stewart. Yeah, he's up there. I just sure. really yeah. love watching him play footy because, yeah. I don't know, he just, like, has that, because he got picked up late, he just has that, like, fuck you mentality. Yeah. And, and I remember, like, four or five years ago where... He, like, intercepted it in the back pocket and ran with a dude. It was like he ne- he didn't really get possession and, he like, it was just, like, them basketball bouncing oh, it up yeah. until, like, the forward pocket. Yeah. Like, the whole way down the wing. Yeah. Um, and the, the reason why I've gone with my guys is because I know what they look like and they're good blokes, I reckon. I'd have a beer with all of them. You know one of mine, Bontempelli. Mm. Uh, probably Bontempelli, Laird, Oliver. Okay. Um, not Neil. C- no, Sicily not far behind now. I fucking love watching Lockie Neil play. Yeah. Lockie Neil is the best player in the AFL. Huge call. But anyway. Let him know. I just, I just think he's a gun. Yeah. Kick, kick a barrel. Drink a nice beer. Thanks, Basil.